Hey everyone, Sharky here. Today, I'm working on a keying circuit for my Cobra 29. Now my Cobra 29 is going to be a bit of a special Cobra 29. It's going to be direct injected, and it's also going to have, possibly, I'm not sure yet, might maybe some asymmetrical modulation. Now, this keying circuit is a little bit special. You can see we got a lot of stuff going on here, so it's not just an on-off switch. What this is, is it creates a delay. Uh, in both turning the radio on and turning the amplifier off and the reason for that is because um, If you're using a big box like some people I know um, You don't want to Click over the the relay inside the amp while there's big RF power flowing through it because that will arc your relay or in the case of a vacuum relay I've come to understand that that could stick your contacts and toast your very expensive vacuum relay so, my Cobra 29 is not necessarily going to go on a big box, but this is good practice. You can use this in any radio. Uh, not just a Cobra 29, it will work in literally any radio. So, let me show you how it works first, and then I'll walk you through the schematic. So, I've got it all breadboarded out here. Um, basically, what this relay is and this LED are connected together. So, when the relay is on, the LED is on. And same over here, when the relay here is on, the LED is on. This one is for your amplifier. So when this clicks on, imagine that's turning on your amplifier. You're clicking over the relay inside your amplifier. This one is for the radio. So this will switch your radio from receive to transmit and also connect your audio input to the uh, audio circuits inside the radio. So this, this little button over here, this is going to be our microphone switch or a foot pedal or however you like to key your mic. So when we push this, you notice there's a delay in turning on the radio. So right now the the time frame, the delay time is, is completely exaggerated. Um, uh, when this is in use, the delay time is only going to be about 50, 50 milliseconds. Um, but I've got some bigger capacitors in there just for demonstration. So what happens is, is when we key the mic, immediately our amp relay clicks over. And then shortly after, our radio clicks over as well and starts transmitting. Now this makes sure that the amp is engaged before you start sending RF in and making power. Now when you release your key, the radio turns off first, so you stop transmitting. There's no power flowing through um, your big amp relay, and then the amp clicks off. So like I said, this delay is pretty exaggerated. We're only going to have about 50 milliseconds when it's finished. But now that you know how it works, let me explain the schematic a little bit. So over here is our microphone switch. If you're running a direct injected radio, you're not going to be keying it with a stock mic. So a single pull, single throw switch is perfectly fine. Uh, this section up here is for keying the amp, and this section down here is for keying the rest of the radio. So for example, when we click this on, power goes up through here, and we've got a resistor and capacitor pair. And this is what creates our time delay. Um, these right here are inverted Schmidt trigger buffers. So on this circuit board over here, I've actually got uh, NAND gates. So I think it's a 4093, CMOS 4093 chip, um, which is perfect because it has four, <clears throat> you can make four inverters out of it, which is what I've done here. And they have the Schmidt trigger input. So the Schmidt trigger input is important for this. Uh, this will not work without using an IC that has Schmidt triggers on it. So basically what happens is when we key the mic, um, our signal comes up in here, and it immediately pulls this capacitor to ground. So when we turn on the mic, this, this transistor pulls this capacitor to ground very quickly. And that goes through our buffer and turns on our amp keying relay. Now when we release the mic switch, this transistor stops pulling the capacitor to ground, and that capacitor slowly recharges through this resistor. Now the value of this resistor and capacitor determines how quickly it charges and how quickly this gate resets and turns off the amp. Um, basically the same thing is going on down here for the radio relay, just in reverse. So when we click this on, um, this transistor releases. So norm under normal operation, when you're not keying the mic, this transistor is turned on, holding this capacitor to ground. When, we're, when we turn on the mic key, this, this transistor turns off and the capacitor begins charging. Once it reaches a certain voltage level, the Schmidt trigger kicks over and turns on our relay. 
So if you notice, this is a PNP, and this, oops, I'm sorry, wrong schematic. This is, this is old schematic, don't pay attention up here, this is bad drawing. This is not much better, but we've got NPN up here and PNP down here, and that's just because we had to invert it one more time, and on the chip I'm using, I don't have a spare inverter. So that's the gist of it. Um, as soon as you unkey this, the radio immediately turns off because this transistor immediately pulls that capacitor to ground or very, very quickly. So that's the basics of it. Here it is again on the breadboard. Amp keys, radio keys, radio unkeys, amp unkeys. So that's the idea. It's really only useful for big, big boxes. But I uh, figured I'd, get, I'd show you guys, and uh, once I've got this all completed, I'll do a video on the Cobra 29 once it's been finished, and I'll show you all the ins and outs and how I implemented this. And uh, also, if you guys want to create recreate this, um, uh, these these inverter buffers, the ones that I used were NAND gates, and I just tied the inputs together. So I used a 4093, but I believe you can get a 4106 CMOS IC. That will do the job just fine. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong, but I think 4106 is is just actual buffer inverter Schmidt triggers. That's a mouthful. Fucking electronics, man. Anyway, uh, the rest of the parts are stupid standard. Uh, 3904, 3904, 3904, 3906. Uh, 1N914, I mean, there's like 20 different parts that'll do the same job. There's like 20 different parts that'll do the same job. Nothing here is too special except DICs. Probably not in your junk box. It was in mine, but it may, may or may not be in yours. Um, these resistor and capacitor values, um, once I am done with this video, I'm going to figure out exact values to get about 50 milliseconds, and once I do, I'll post that value in the comments. But uh, Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you had some ideas. Hope you learned how to do some cool new radio stuff. Anyway, Sharky, out.